in this video, I'm going to go over some camera basics so that way people like you could stop overpaying people like me and you could start filming your own videos. I mean, it's super easy. All you have to do is buy the most expensive camera you could afford along with the most expensive lens you could afford and then just get used to some editing software that looks like this. You ready to learn some sh Okay, so first off, I was obviously joking about everything that I said before. You don't need super fancy camera gear. I mean, I myself am a low budget shooter. Learning editing software can be intimidating, but absolutely doable. And as far as how and why camera folk like myself get compensated the way we do, I'll save that for another video. But today, we're going to go over the most basic of the basics of all things cameras, and that is exposure. Let's first go over some terminology. What is exposure? Exposure is nothing more than the amount of light that reaches your sensor of your camera. It's how bright or dark the image appears to be. If your image is too bright and most of what you see is white, then we call that overexposed. If your image is too dark and most of what you see is black, then we call that underexposed. Easy enough, right? Now, the question is how do you use a camera and its settings to control the amount of light that reaches the sensor to control how bright or dark the image is. In photography, there's something called the exposure triangle. The three sides of the triangle represent the three variables that affect exposure. And much like how a triangle can't exist without all three sides, you can't get proper exposure without manipulating these three variables, shutter speed, ISO, and aperture. So the camera has a mechanism in front of the sensor called a shutter. That trademark noise that you hear when you take a photo, that's the shutter opening up and slamming down. Shutter speed refers to how long it takes that shutter to open and close in front of the sensor, exposing it to light for a certain amount of time, usually measured in fractions of a second. The slower you make that shutter speed, the more time that shutter is raised up, allowing more light to hit the sensor, making the image brighter. Conversely, if you make the shutter speed faster, that's fucking weak sauce. All right, Sony, show us what you got. I like to use this analogy to simplify it a little bit more. Let's say your eyes are the sensor of the camera while your eyelids are the shutter. Now, if you blink slowly or not at all, you could see everything pretty clearly because your eyes are open long enough for light to reach it. But if you blink faster and faster, most of what you'll see is darkness because there's not enough time for the light to reach your eye. Shutter speed affects the image in one other way. In addition to making the image brighter or darker, it could either add or reduce the amount of motion blur. To illustrate this point, I'm going to crank the shutter speed down. And you see how it's getting brighter? And then now you see all this motion blur. It almost looks like the light can't keep up with my movements and you see like all this blurriness that's going on. Now let's take it to the opposite extreme and then crank that shutter speed way up. Hopefully you can see me. I'll brighten up the, the ring light a little bit so you can see me a little bit better. And then now you see this like stuttery staccato thing going on. Like there's zero motion blur. Like when you see my fingers, they're jumping. They're, they're very jittery. Now let's move on to ISO. This one's pretty easy. ISO measures the camera's sensitivity to light. Lower ISO values dampen the sensitivity and then therefore makes the image darker, while higher ISO values make it brighter. But that's not all. Just like how motion blur was a byproduct of shutter speed, ISO has its own byproduct and that is noise. Noise is the gritty, ugly specs that you see in an image. This is usually the case in very low lit scenarios that may require cranking that ISO higher. The higher the ISO value, the more noise you're going to get and then the less quality your image will have. To illustrate this point, I'm going to turn down my light and then just crank the ISO way up to brighten up the image and then you should see like it's not it's not looking good it's very it's very grainy it's very gritty and finally last but not least we have aperture the easiest way to explain aperture is that it is the iris of the lens much like the iris in our eye that opens up or closes down to control the amount of light coming in the aperture does the exact same thing so if you look inside the lens you'll see a very small hole I could make that smaller 
so that less light is coming inside. Or I can make it bigger and allow more light inside. And that's how aperture affects exposure by making it brighter or darker. But as you should know by now, that's not all. The size of the aperture also affects the depth of field. Now what's depth of field? Depth of field is the zone of sharpness within an image that appears in focus. If you notice in this scene, I am in focus while the background behind me is blurry. So I am within that depth of field. <sighs> Let me just draw this out for you guys. So here's our camera. And let's say in front of the camera, we'll have a person. Now let's say we want this person to be in focus while everything else around him in the background and foreground is blurry and out of focus. So we just have to make sure that our person is within, let me change colors for this one, our depth of field. Everything within the blue lines is going to be sharp and in focus while everything outside the blue lines is going to be blurry. Now how blurry or out of focus something is will depend on the opening of that aperture. The wider that aperture, the more shallow. Now our person is within a more narrow or shallow depth of field within those dotted lines. So everything else outside those dotted lines is going to be even more blurry. Now if we deepen the depth of field, let's go with red for this one. Everything within the red lines now is in focus because that depth of field is way deeper, it's bigger. Everything in front of the lens that's inside this area is going to be sharp. Now, an important thing to remember is that these three variables work together. It really just depends on the lighting of the environment you're in and the type of shot that you want to take. I suggest that you try out different scenes with different lighting situations and then play around with these exposure settings to see how it affects your image. And after some practice and gaining some experience, you'll know exactly what to do to which setting to get the image to look the way that you want. I'm going to be continuing this series of how to use a camera and make videos, so if you want to keep up with those videos, consider subscribing. If you found this video informative or at the very least entertaining, don't be shy to show me some love. Hit that like button down below. This is Kevin Mendoza. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.